Okay, so I'm uh, I'm actually creating this this video from uh, sunny San Diego, California here. Um, but since I can't be in class, I thought I would uh, throw together a, a YouTube video of the uh, the project that you're supposed to be working on. Um, one other small error, I don't have my textbook with me, um, but I do recall both of the projects for uh, the design project D32 and D33 that you guys are going to be working on. Uh, so a couple of things here. Let's let's go ahead and get started on this. I'll uh, I'll tile my windows here, and then as usual, we're going to start off with our uh, with our program level comments here uh, with the name. Uh, the project. I swear I, I do these in uh, reverse order sometimes. Uh, I'm going to call this, the, this project will be called uh, random number. The uh, revision. So in this case it'll be 001. And then the date. And today's date is 1-31-2013. All right, so to generate a random number, one of the things that they wanted to do on this, uh, the random number generator, and this may not be exactly as the design project's written, which is okay, because I, I want you to, uh, this is, the idea is to get you a little bit of a head start, but not uh, do all the work for you. Um, so I believe, and I don't remember the exact values, but I, I believe they wanted some LEDs in here um, that would be, uh, you know, let's say maybe negative 10 to 0, um, let me make this a little bit different size so we can see them a little better. You know, maybe we'd make the next one would be uh, uh, from one to five, and the last one maybe we'll make from five to ten. So we're going to generate a random number, and again, the range may be different in your design problem, uh, but in this particular case, I'm going to delineate when the numbers are are negative when they're uh, much smaller from 1 to 5 and then also when they're from uh, 5 to 10. Um, so this will be my random numbers alright one of the other things I, I'd like for you to do on this project is uh, incorporate a looping instruction we want to get away from from using the uh, the run continuous and actually um, and allow our, our program to loop on its own with a, a pre-built program stop. Um, either a, a number of iterations that we're going to run or the other option would be a user intervention stop. Um, so in this particular example um, I'm just going to throw in one of the two looping uh, uh, structures that we have. So if you if you right click on your block diagram and go to structures. Um, for this particular one I'm just going to use a for loop. Uh, again we could you know, perhaps on the next one I'll use a while loop, um, you know, or or whatever the case may be. But on this particular one, I'm gonna use a for loop, and I'm gonna install that right there. All right, and uh, I'm gonna let this thing just run for uh, this. This n here is the number of iterations I want to want run. This i is actually my iteration count. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this uh, for create a constant of 10 iterations. Um, it'll actually run from iteration 0 to iteration 9, so it'll always be offset by 1. So really is n, n is n minus 1. But regardless, it's 10 iterations. You can kind of think of these as 10 pages in a notebook. Page 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 0 through 9. Uh, it doesn't make a difference how you number them. There's still 10 pages. Um, now there's a couple of ways you can go about the random number uh, that you, you're going to use inside here. The first way, now, now of course when we run this, we're only going to get 10 iterations of this. All right, So we're going to get 10 random numbers. And the first one will show up wherever it shows up, and the next one wherever it shows up. Uh, so the first thing you could do is you could go in here, and you could go into your numeric palette. And within here, there's a nice little random number generator. So you throw this guy in here, and what he does, and if you didn't know what he did, um, generally speaking, if you're looking for a number, you always go into that, that numeric palette. And odds are, in one of the palettes or subpalettes in here, you're going to find something that you're looking for. And you usually can, can kind of identify it. The dice kind of gives away random number. Um, so now, if I wanted to know how this thing worked, though, is I'd control H to go to context help mouse over the device and it says it produces a double precision floating point number between 0 and 1 
the number generated is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 1. So I'm going to get numbers like 0 0.5, 0 0.7, uh, but it'll be a number of decimal places, um, all the way up to 1 and all the way down to 0. Um, it's not going to be a number from negative 10 to 10. Okay, well that's not a big deal. We can, we can do some simple math and, and make this device work. Um, so at this point, you could go into a structure here, and perhaps you would go into your formula node, and you draw in your formula node here, and maybe we'd enter a, uh, we'd add an input to our formula node of x, okay? And then we'd wire this guy up. So we have x coming in, and then I'd right click on the, the output wall here, and I'd add an output of y. And we've got y coming in, out. Um, and, uh, and again, you know, at this point we could do some comparisons on y, we could do a, a compare instruction and say, uh, is it, is it uh, if it's between 0 and negative 10 and 0, we're going to say less than or equal to, I uh, would say less than or equal to 0 is what we'd say. So we create a constant here, and we look at y, and if it's less than or equal to 0, we turn on that, that output as a, as a Boolean instruction. Okay, and I'll clean up my wires there a little bit. Um, but we could also could do another compare instruction and say, uh, uh, is it, uh, Oh, I'm not in the right category here. Um, is it uh, greater than 0 and less than 6? You know, so now I go into my compare and say, and less than 6. So I can look at these, these uh, and be careful that you don't accidentally connect those two guys. Um, but I can say, is the number greater than 0? So I do greater than, I create a constant here of 0, and here I'd create a constant of 6. And I might have to do a little AND instruction because I'd have to be in both cases. Um, it'd have to be greater than 0 and it'd have to be less than 6 to be between 1 and 5. Okay. And then the last case would be, uh, is it greater than than five. Um, now you could say, well, you know, now you've 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 taken some liberty here, uh, because how do we know it's not negative twenty? You know, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it so that my my math isn't gonna let it be anything but those other things. But these are all things that you need to account for here. Uh, so in this case, is it greater than five down at the bottom here? So I think I've accounted for all the uh, all the potential variables here. Now what we have to do is we have to do a little bit of math on y. Uh, on X to, to make it a Y. So, so the first thing that we would have to do is the number coming in is between 0 and 1. You know, you can think of that as 0 to 100%. Um, that's what's going to come into X. And we can say, you know, Y equals, uh, I could say Y equals X, and, and that's, uh, that's not going to help me out at all. Uh, let's see here. We're getting some errors here. Oh, no, we're not, no. So Y equals X, and... Uh, the value coming in here. Uh, oh, and one other thing to look at here. One of the one of the other neat things to kind of kind of pay attention to here is uh, when I hit run, it doesn't appear that I'm getting ten iterations, does it? Because it's going really really quick. Um, we're, we're really getting iterations at the speed of the processor. So the other thing you can do just to make this a little more interesting is right click inside your loop, and if you go into timing, you can grab this nice little wait instruction. Let's make each iteration be one second. So I'm going to create a constant on this wait. And again, if you didn't know what a wait instruction did, you control H it, you mouse over it, and it says waits the specified number of milliseconds and returns the value of millisecond timer. Um, so what this does is it's going to keep me in that loop for a thousand milliseconds or one second. Now the nice thing about that is I would see uh, I would see this thing loop for ten full seconds, and you can see it's running. Uh, the only the only real uh, the only real trouble here is that uh, right now my number is always between zero and one, and because it's always between zero and one, I'm always in in this in this area. And really, uh, zero to six is not, uh, or zero to five is not one to five. You know, so we ought to we ought to encompass all of our numbers here. So negative ten to zero, zero to five, five to ten. Um, so now as I loop through this thing, it's always between the 0 and 5. Well, why is that? Because the number I'm getting out of here, as you can see if I probe it, 
is 0 0.17, 0 0.96, 0 0.21. You can actually see it as you probe the data there that it's never going to be um, it's never going to be any bigger than that. So, so what we need to do is we need to uh, we need to get it into a new range rather than being only zero to one. Let's say we want it to be negative ten to ten. Now, what I will tell you. Um, for the purpose of this, and for those of you that are a little bit more uh, outgoing, if you control H the formula node, and you go into your detailed help, and you go into uh, uh, the detailed help for formula node, and you go into functions, you can see there are there is a random number generator in here, um, uh, potentially even some uh, some comparing that you can do in there too. So a lot of this stuff could go right into your formula node, and that's aimed at one particular person. Uh, uh, that might might want to take that on, um, but you don't have to. Uh, it's good enough to to do whatever you're comfortable doing at this point. As we go further and further into the semester, uh, we will start to make that code more and more efficient. Um, so y equals x. Right now that number is zero to one. All right. So we need. So what we're going to do in this block is we're going to convert from zero to one to negative ten to ten. Uh, I, I'm going to put negative 10 to positive 10. Uh, well, negative 10 to 10. You know, instead of putting that little dash in there, I'm going to, because that can be confused with a, a negative sign, I'll actually go ahead and just write out the word 2. Oh, crud, there we go. There we go. So it's going to convert. So y equals x. Well, that's fine. Um, how about, instead of y equals x, how about y equals x? Uh, times times 20 and I wonder if anybody knows why I picked that value well the reason why I picked that value is the range between negative 10 and 10 is a range of 20 okay so now if I run this thing I'm gonna get a few different values it's gonna bounce around between 0 and 5 and 5 and 10 but it's not gonna get into the negative range why well because 0 times 20 is 0 and 0.5 times 20 is 10 and 1 times 20 is 20 but I don't have a negative value okay um, so what I might do on the next line is I might say well no let's redo this y a little bit y is equal to y minus 10 to offset that range so instead of going from 0 to 20 now my y could go from negative 10 to 10 I think so now we'll try it and I'm gonna as soon as I hit run here I'm gonna pause it and I'm going to place a probe there so we can actually watch our probe data here. I'll turn off the pause and you can actually see, oh, I'm looking at the wrong data here. Should be looking out here. Uh, we can actually see the data. It goes from zero. Now I don't know that we ever saw, let's run it again because I don't know if we ever saw a negative number. Yeah, there was a negative number. Well, I guess I don't need to probe it. I mean, we're really kind of probing it with these, uh, with these LEDs out here too. So there's a negative 10. So we're seeing all kinds of data come out of this thing. Negative 10. Ooh, there was a funky one there. Uh, we got a double 5 there. Uh, well, here's the reason why. Okay, we, so again, being careful here. Um, if it's greater than 5, uh, let's make this less than or equal to 5. So we'll change this. So one of the things you can do that's kind of neat is you can right-click on a block and go to Replace comparison and we're going to do less than or equal to and we're going to make this five we don't want to use six okay we want to go negative 10 to 0 0 to 5 but everything bigger than 5 falls in here so now we should never get a chance where two LEDs can be on at the same time negative 10 to 0 5 to 10 0 to 5 negative 10 to 0 0 to 5 so now we're bouncing around and we're seeing some good numbers now I don't recall for sure on the homework but it may have you do a graph or something and these are all tools that you should be able to look up in the help files but at a bare minimum uh, you should at least have a good start on this one okay